Hey there, we're gonna rig up the Canon R8 for shooting video. Now, if you don't have a Canon R8, don't worry. There'll be a lot of ideas in this video that'll be applicable to pretty much every mirrorless camera. Now, one of the main motivations for rigging up the Canon R8 is, of course, the horrible battery life. Canon put their, their tiny battery in here, which is good for just over an hour of runtime in 4K24. So, of course, one of the things we'll have to do is put a bigger battery on this camera. Little bit of a disclaimer, I'm gonna be showing you a lot of small rig parts throughout this video, and they did send some of the stuff to me to test and review but they didn't pay me anything to make this video. They don't get to see this video before it goes up. And of course, opinion about everything is my own. And I always try to find products that I find will be of value to you. So a lot of cool stuff to share in this video. And I wanna give you some ideas and show you some modularity so you can rig your camera up and down depending on what you're trying to do. So anytime you have to rig out a camera, you gotta put a cage or a bracket or something on the camera to get started. And I generally recommend a full cage for protection and for you know options for mounting. But Small Rig sent me this product to check out. I wanna share with you because I think it's pretty cool. Now this is a L bracket and L brackets are generally used by photographers more than videographers. But what's cool about this is that it folds. And also if you're doing vertical content, this can be really handy. So let me show you. So we have a foldable L bracket. So if I press this button here, the piece on the side will fold away and clip into the bottom. And very easily there's a button on the other side here where you press that and opens back up. Now, that's cool on its own, but what I love about this is that there's two points of connection between the bracket and the camera. If you're ever trying to shoot vertical or just hold the camera in a weird position, if you only have one mounting place on the camera, which is usually the quarter 20 on the bottom, the camera starts to twist. And so what's neat about this is that there's this little pin right here, which sits in the bottom of the camera. So on the bottom of the camera here, we have our quarter 20, and we also have that little hole right here for the bracket to pop into. So if we put the bracket on here, it sits in there really nicely with that pin falling in place and it doesn't twist. So let's tighten this up here. So it comes with the tool in the bottom. I'm really glad to see the cage and rigging manufacturer starting to include tools with little magnets here so you don't lose them. So anyways, that's in there now. And as I said before, it's pretty cool because all we have to do is press this button here and this thing will fold up and down. So let me show you how this works. So let's fold it down. And on the bottom here, we have a NATO rail. So that's really handy. So if we wanna pop this on a tripod, gimbal, et cetera, we can just pop this on, twist it, and we're good to go. And if you wanna go vertical, you just press the, the button underneath here, flip it up, now we're vertical. So that's really, really handy. So if you're going vertical for photo or video, super easy. If you don't wanna rig out your camera, you have a really good option to do that quickly and, it's, uh, and it tucks away pretty nicely. The other thing is on the bottom here, we can actually loosen this back up and we can slide the L bracket over. So if we loosen this and we press this button here, we can slide the bracket over and tighten it back up. And that will just give you a couple more options if you're looking to mount this in different ways or you need to have some more space around accessories, those sorts of things. So as I said, you know, you still can loosen this up, fold it away, and uh, you have a really cool little L bracket. All right, so now let's get this L bracket off, put a cage on here, start rigging out for shooting video. But I wanna show you this tool here, which I bought a while ago and I use it all the time. I should probably buy one for each of my backpacks and cases because they're so handy. It's a little multi-tool multi, -rig, multi from Small Rig. It's got Allen keys and on this side, it's got a screwdriver, some other stuff, and then also this guy here is super handy for loosening and tightening quarter 20s if you're taking plates on the bottom, often on the bottom of your camera. You don't have to look for a quarter or whatever. I used to always have quarters in all my bags and stuff. So nice little tool. I'll probably be using this throughout the video just to tighten and loosen things. Again, super valuable, not very expensive. So let's take this, this L bracket off of here. And let's grab the cage. So one thing is that smaller cages are all pretty easy to use. Uh, their designs have been pretty similar for the last few rounds and I don't really have complaints about them. They're pretty lightweight, but sturdy enough and rigid enough to protect the camera and also to mount things too. So let's get this mounted in here. It attaches in three places. We have a quarter 20 on the bottom and then we have two things on the side that go into where the strap attaches to. So you put this in here and we just wanna get the quarter 20 engaged.
And once we do that, we can put the pieces in the side. I'll tighten it all the way just so I can line things up. And then we have these guys here, which pop in the side and they will attach to where the straps attach. So one goes in here. And then we're gonna take the tool off the bottom. Tighten this guy up. And we'll do the same on the other side. Rigging up cameras is so much fun. And tighten it underneath. All right, so now we got our cage on here. Just to point out about the cage, as I said, pretty standard cage for a small rig. One thing I always like about their designs is the handles here, uh, where it goes around the grip edge. It's like smooth and sort of like beveled so that when you hold it, you can still get a nice grip on the camera. You don't feel like you're holding the cage. You still feel like you're holding the camera. We have some mounting stuff up on the top here. We also have a cold shoe. And on this side, we have a NATO rail as well as some mounting places. And on the bottom, of course, like I already talked about, we have the tool that sits in there with a magnet and we also have a NATO rail and then we have access to our battery and memory card in here as well. So now that we got the camera all rigged up, let's talk about the battery solution because it's kind of the heart and soul of this whole build. So for that, we're gonna use Small Rig's V-mount plate adapter, which came out somewhat recently. I made a whole dedicated video about this because I think it's super cool. I'll leave that video linked down below where I go through all the details and the motivation and excitement about why I love this thing so much. But basically what this does is it allows you to put a camera on here with Arca Swiss and on the back, we have a V-mount plate to attach a V-mount battery. A couple things to point out about this is that you can adjust the camera forward and backwards by loosening this, which I'll show you once the camera's in here. And we also have this knob here. When you turn this, the plate can move up and down. And on the bottom, we have Arca Swiss as well. So this can drop right into a tripod. So super, super nice, compact, pretty light, awesome setup. So because the cage has Arca Swiss on the bottom, we can just slide it in from the side, try to get it centered and lock it down. So now we have a V mount plate on the back of our mirrorless camera and it is pretty compact and is uh, ready to go here. So in terms of batteries, I like these small rig V mount batteries. This is the 99 watt hour. I've talked about this battery a few times on this channel. They make a few different sizes. This is the medium one. This is also the largest one that you can get bring on an airplane. I like these batteries because I think they look cool. You also press this button, it'll show you the percentage on the battery itself. And one of the coolest things about this are the ports on here. So on the top of the battery, we have USB-A, USB-C, and two DC barrel connections. We also have a D-tap on the side. But what's nice is because we have those USB-C on the top, we can use this to power all sorts of things like your cell phone, uh, your gimbal, other devices, even your like kids' devices. <laughs> Done, you've used that on uh, family vacations and trips and stuff. This is a great battery bank as well. But on top of that, usually with VMOP batteries, you have to charge them through a DTAP charger, which is another expense, but you can charge this through USB C, so that's really handy. So I'm going to pop this on the back, and there we go. Now we have a V mount on the back of our camera. So let's put a lens on here just to keep this thing a little bit more balanced. I have the RF 24 to 70, which is a great all purpose lens. All right, here, here we go. We got a nice, a nice setup to start with. Let's start adding some more stuff. All right, so with this big 24 to 70 on here, it's a little front heavy. So I'm gonna put a plate on the bottom to keep it more balanced as I rig it out. Also, I mainly use Manfrotto plates on my tripods. So if you're using Arca Swiss, as I said, this pops right on. So I'm just gonna add this Manfrotto plate on the bottom here to keep it more steady. And also that's how I would rig it out if I was doing this for my own setup. All right, so the things I wanted to point out before about this V-mount plate, as I said before, if you loosen this on the side here, you can move the camera in and out. So if you have a longer EVF or some other restriction, you can slide the battery back. The other cool thing is if you loosen this here, you can pull the battery down, pull out the LCD, 
And if you need to put it away, you can do that as well. So I'm just gonna keep it away for this build, but if you need it out for heat management or to, to use the LCD, make sure you, you pull it out. Now let's get on to all the fun stuff, handles, monitor mounts, audio solutions, all that kind of stuff. So we gotta talk about how we're gonna get that onto the cage. So on the top of the cage, we have this little area here, which has quarter 20s, it also has the three eighths with the RE pins. So there's a couple of different options here. And as I said, I wanna give you some options here and some flexibility depending on what you wanna do. So there's a couple different monitor mounts I'm gonna mention, one of which is this guy here and this one I really really like this one has the RE locating pins and that keeps it from twisting and on the top here is where the monitor will go on so if you want to keep this really really minimal you can just pop this on the top here and screw this down and it'll be very very simple and pop your monitor on now for monitors you could use anything you want lately I've been actually using this guy here which is the 5 inch Shinobi uh, I used to use the Atomos Ninja V because I bought it forever ago for doing external recording for testing and all that kind of stuff. But what I found was that the Shinobi has the same panel, I believe, as the Ninja V, but it's like uses half the power, it's like half the weight, and um, it doesn't have a lot of the features, but if you're just using it for monitoring, it's great. It also isn't loud like the Ninja V. So this is what I've been actually using fairly often for just monitoring solutions. Also, I've really enjoyed these small batteries, and so I had the medium-sized batteries, and I realized I, I can get away with the small ones for most of the time, too. But we're gonna, I'm actually going to show you how to hook this up to the V-mount as well. So anyways, if you are looking for a very simple, really compact situation here with just a monitor, this is a great solution. But let's, let's, uh, let's get this a little bit fancier. So I'm going to take this guy off. Take the monitor mount off. And so one thing I want to introduce to you, if you don't know about this, these guys here, this is a NATO rail. They make these in all different sizes. This is one of their smaller ones. This is actually the low profile one. So it doesn't take up a lot of space and doesn't add a lot of height to your rig. So this will actually screw onto the top of the cage here. And this will allow us to attach NATO accessories. There's also a NATO rail on the side of the cage, which I showed you earlier. And it's a cool system. It allows you for quick access on and off with lots of different accessories. So I'm gonna put this little NATO rail on here and it allows us to get things on and off quickly. In addition to the NATO rail being low profile, it also has these safety pins on the edges. So if you have an accessory that gets loose, it won't just slide off. You have to depress this to get it off. So nice little feature there. So let's talk about top handles. So this top handle is one of my favorites. I've shown this before in other videos. This one is cool because it has got this wooden bottom, which I think looks cool, is also really comfortable. It has a NATO attachment, which will go on our NATO rail, which we just showed you. It also has this knob here, so when you loosen this, the handle can spin around, so you can put it forwards or backwards or use it as a side handle, which I'll show you in a little bit. So let's get this on the camera. So we just put this on our NATO rail, just slide it on, and then we can tighten it down. And now we have a nice top handle. And as I said before, if you loosen this, you can spin around to be in the front. If you need to change the balance or you just want a, uh, a forward facing handle and you can also twist to the side and stuff if you want to use it as a side handle. I'll show you that a little bit later. Okay, so for this, if we want to add a monitor, we're going to take our monitor mount, which I showed you before and going to put it on the front here because this has the RE locating pins on the front so it won't twist. It'll be nice and sturdy. Okay, and then we can put our monitor on. Probably should have just left this on the monitor mount before, but oh well. So there you go, you got your monitor, which is pretty low, which is good. I can't stand when the rigs get too tall. So again, if we're holding this, the monitor will be right out in front of us, which will look really good. The other thing you can do if you don't have one of these, or if you just want a little bit more flexibility with a monitor mount, is going to be this monitor mount here, which is a cold shoe and then the monitor mount on this side. So this, because it has a cold shoe up here, you could slide that on. You could also put this right on the hot shoe of the camera, although I don't like to usually put a lot of weight on there. Uh, I get nervous about that, but this is an option too. You can use this in a lot of different situations. So I just wanted to point out this as well. 
Okay, so this is the top handle I've been using. And like I said before, with the safety pin here, to get it off, you have to press this down and then you can slide this over. So Smallrig sent me this new top handle and it's got some really cool new features. So let me show you around it a little bit. First of all, it's got these two screws here, which you can loosen to slide the handle forward and backward to make your rig a little bit more balanced. Of course, it has a built-in Allen key here, so you don't have to go look for a tool. It has lots of cool mounting spots all over it. So we have quarter 20 and RE locating stuff over here. On the top, we have a whole bunch more stuff. On the back, we have a cold shoe, which is great for attaching like a wireless lav, pike, lav pack. That's a great place to put that. And then on the top and front, we have the cold shoe and RE locating like we were talking about before. So a lot of cool options there. Now, the coolest thing about this is that Smallrig has a new quick release NATO system. So this right here is their quick release system and let me show you how it works. All you have to do, instead of sliding in from the side, is you just put it on, push down, and lock it. And now it's, it's locked on. And to get it off, you just loosen it, take it off. So it's quick, it's secure, and also the fact that if you have a longer NATO rail and you have a couple different accessories on it, you don't have to slide everything on and off, you can just pop it on and off just like that. So really cool to have that accessory on here. It's a cool new system. I wanted to show you that. So let's start rigging this thing out. And of course, if you need to you know, move it forwards and backwards, you just loosen it and slide it around to get it in the right spot and then tighten it down. So a quick note about top handles, they're great for a few reasons, and if you've never considered one, let me explain why you might want one. First of all, they're great for just carrying your camera around if you're walking or having to move things or put it on off a tripod. Sometimes it can get a little cumbersome. The top handle is absolutely fantastic. Also, it's a great way to get low angle shots or just to hold the camera in different orientations. So top handles are super handy. All right, let's get the monitor on. So of course, we're gonna use the same monitor rig before the RE locating pin, so we're gonna pop that in the front there and tighten that guy down. And now we have our monitor on there. So before we start rigging everything up with power, let's talk about a couple of other accessories. So like I said before, if you want a side handle, you can use this guy here by loosening it. And then because this has a NATO on the side here, we can just slide this on and you're good to go. I don't find this to be super comfortable for a side handle. I prefer an actual side handle. Um, and so I recommend this guy here, which I've shown in a few other videos. It's a little bit small, but it gets the job done. It's also not that expensive. And the other cool thing here is it's got a cold shoe on the top, which is gonna come in real handy for putting a microphone on here. And of course, it's got NATO. This is all reversible. Uh, you can put on either side, forwards, backwards, all that stuff by loosening these guys here. And of course, the Allen key is in the bottom. So we're gonna put this on the side here and tighten this down. One thing I wanna mention is make sure that the thing that you use to tighten it here is on the front because if it's on the back, it'll get in the way of all your ports and stuff over here. So now we have the basis of our rig put together here. The side handle is really cool because if you're shooting handheld, you can hold the camera just like this, pressed against your chest with the battery. You have the monitor right in front of you. It's really stable, you get three points of contact. If you need to you know, go up and adjust the lens for pulling focus or zooming, you can do that easily and pop back over here. Very compact, very stable. Really, really nice. But let's get on talking about power options and cabling and all that sort of stuff. So first thing is let's plug the camera into the battery. Now there are a few ways of doing this. One of which is by using a dummy battery. And that's one of those little fake batteries that goes into the battery compartment and then it plugs into the V-mount uh, battery. I actually prefer most of the time to use USB-C because if anything happens, you still have the battery inside the camera that's sort of a backup. Uh, and if you are doing the USB-C option, I think you still need to have the battery in the camera as well for it to run. So let's plug this in. So I'm using a USB-C cable to go from the camera to the battery. This one's got a little right angle on here, but sort of whatever works for your cable management, we're gonna plug this guy in right here. Next, let's talk about powering the monitor. So of course, you can just use a battery on the back of the monitor. I really like these small ones because the Shinobi doesn't pull a lot of power. But I think if you're going through the trouble of setting up a V-mount battery, a cool thing to do is to plug your monitor into your V-mount because when you're shooting, you only have to worry about one battery dying. You don't have to worry, is the camera dying? Is the monitor dying? And it's just one thing to charge up. And if you have an extra V-mount, you can just swap that out and everything will be running. So. It's really nice to plug all the things in together. So to do that, we're gonna take off the battery and we're gonna use this adapter here, which is actually included in the Atomos products. This is a battery to DC connection here. 
So we pop this on the back and then we're gonna need a cable. And so this cable is D tap to DC barrel. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this into the Shinobi. And we're gonna plug that into the D tap on the side of the battery. So now our monitor is also powered from the V-mount battery, so that's all tied together. Now let's connect the video signal from the camera to the monitor, and I like these really small, lightweight HDMI cables. Uh, this, of course, is HDMI to, full-size HDMI to micro HDMI, of course, because we're dealing with a Canon camera. Uh, another thing is this guy here, this is a little 90-degree HDMI connector, which I like in certain situations, not necessary, but I think it keeps it a little bit more tidy and they're cool to have around uh, for certain rigging situations. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna plug this into the side of the Shinobi, and then you gotta figure out your own cable uh, management situation here, but we're gonna plug this into the side of the camera here. And there you go, now we have everything hooked up and we are ready to go. Now let's talk about audio. And like I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons I wanted to have the side handle on here was the cold shoe on the top. And this is where we're gonna attach our microphone. It's also really handy that it extends away from the body of the camera so that when the microphone is attached here, it has room to pass by the monitor on the top. Now you can use any 3.5 millimeter microphone. The one I've been using lately is this guy here. This is the Sennheiser MKE 400. I really like Sennheiser products and I've been really enjoying this microphone. It sounds great. It's also very compact. A lot of the microphones I've used in the past, they stand up really tall and it's kind of annoying and large and this keeps it a little bit more compact. So this also has like a dual dead cat situation. So the actual capsule of the microphone has some uh, wind protection, but then when you put the dead cat on here, you get like double wind protection. And I love that because I'm often shooting outside and this microphone does great with that. Also, this microphone has a lot of gain. It also has a front connection, which is a little bit different with a locking connector here, which I really like. So let's get this on the camera here. Tighten this down and then we'll run our cable in here. And it's getting a little congested in here, but we can definitely get this in here. And now we have our audio solution as well. So the whole camera is rigged up and ready to go. We have audio, power, monitor, and uh, yeah, this is a pretty powerful compact video setup. And if you need to get a little bit crazier with your build, need something like a follow focus, lens support, map box, you want rails on your camera, it's pretty easy to do that with a base plate like this, pretty inexpensive and small. You can bolt this onto the bottom of your setup and then you have whatever length rods you need to attach those accessories. I used this in a previous build, but this new V-mount plate has taken that over for the most part. So if you need that, this is pretty easy to add on to the camera. Let me give you some run times. So I did a video about overheating on the R8 and it does overheat um, with long run times, but I noticed that if you're in a cool environment, like I was in my studio here, it was like 70, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. I let the camera run for quite a while and didn't overheat. Keep in mind, the R8 has a two hour recording time limit. Now that's not a heat time limit, that's like an old school Canon time limit. So you have to restart the camera. So let me give you some run times here. Of course, I had a fully charged battery inside the camera when I was doing this. When I was running just the camera itself without a monitor, in at two hours, the battery was down to 87%, at four hours, 73%, and at five hours, it was down to 66%. Then when I ran it with the monitor, at two hours, it was at 73%, four hours, 44%, and five hours at 29%. And I still had a full battery. So you could definitely get a full day with this, and that was full, like, non-stop recording. So if you're on and off, I think with this kind of setup, you could get most of a day, if not a whole day. Uh, that's a really nice situation to have with just one battery. Uh, this camera doesn't really pull that much power. And that was, again, that was all in 4K24. So got some nice long run times. So hopefully this gave you some ideas and inspiration for your own rigs. Now, as I said before, there's a lot of modularity and flexibility with this. It also comes apart really quickly. And so let me show you some of those different setups and how quickly it is to take it apart if you're looking to pack it away or just have a different configuration. So first of all, let's say you don't need the monitor. So let's unplug the monitor and then use the quick disconnect NATO system. Boom, this thing comes off real easily. So now you have a nice setup here where you have a battery that'll run the camera all day. You have a side handle and a microphone. So really great for handheld shooting. It also has some weight to it. So you'll get some more stable footage. Let's say you don't want the battery. So we can unplug the battery, slide the plate off the bottom. And now we just have a camera with a side handle and a microphone. So super, super lightweight. 
And then let's say we want to take the microphone and the side handle off. Well, you can do that really easily as well. And we're back down to just the camera. So as you can see, lots of modularity and lots of ideas with this. And as I said before, hopefully give you some inspiration ideas for your own rigs. Big thanks to Small Rig for sending me a lot of this gear to test out and review and share with all of you. There'll be links down in the description for everything mentioned in this video. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. We'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.